the most important thing is that I'm so glad that you're here tonight. If you wanted to take a minute to say where you're from and put it in the chat, you're going to see there's people here from all over the country. And the style for these classes is this. Some of you paint often, some of you don't. And either way, it's absolutely fine. When you come to these classes, I want you to be your authentic self. I want you to take this time to breathe and to recharge and to practice your creativity. That is why we're here. You're gonna go at your own speed. The class is being recorded. So if you wanna go a little slower and then watch the recording after, Ashley's gonna email that to everybody tomorrow, which is really quite nice. So thank you, Ashley, in advance for doing that. So go at your own speed, be yourself. Art, tonight we're gonna to be painting some birch trees. Let me put that inspiration right in the chat window so everybody can see that. First and foremost, I always love having um, like a visual to look at in these classes. It just allows us to kind of stay, have somewhere to start from a framework perspective. So we're painting a beautiful fall birch scene. And I want you to interpret this as your own. You do not have to copy me. I want you to use this as your own inspiration for tonight, okay? So that's enough talking. Let's go over the supply list together. So everyone's gonna need something to paint on. I am painting on 11 by 14 canvas paper tonight. You don't always need canvas. You don't always need a canvas panel. You can paint on like acrylic paper. It's kind of a nice thing to try if you haven't, but anything to paint on is fine. The size doesn't matter, okay? You're gonna need an array of brushes. Any style of basic craft brushes will do. So the biggest brush I have tonight is like a half inch flat tip brush, but I have some other sizes. This is a number two round tip. I basically have an array, some small and some medium sizes, okay? So an array of brushes, I just grabbed some that were nearby. This is what I have for tonight. So whatever you have will be just fine. All right, <clears throat> paint colors. We're doing birch trees. So you will need white. You also need black because birch trees are white and a little bit of gray with a little bit of black detail. The background of this painting is gonna be really fun and lively and abstract. It's gonna be some dark greens. We might mix some greens with some blues. And then we might make a lighter, like more yellowish green for some brighter hints in that background. So we're kind of doing like a forest in the background and we're gonna be overlaying some birch trees on top. So a little bit of our process there. We'll start in the background and work our way to the foreground, okay? Uh, in addition to the canvas, the paints and the brushes, if you have a cup of water to rinse your brushes, grab that. If you have a pencil and you wanna do a little sketching of your trees um, after our background is done, you're welcome to do that for placement. Sometimes that's helpful for placement is a pencil. And I always have a paper towel because I usually have paint all over my hands by the end of class, okay? So those are some of the basic things you need. Other paint colors we talked about a little while ago were greens and blues. And there's some brown on the ground. So if you have red, that would be a really good thing to have too. But your basic primaries coming into these classes, red, yellow, and blue, I can teach you how to mix and blend so many beautiful colors. So just take this as simply as you wish, but we're gonna jump in and have a good time. All right. So I'm gonna be painting with you every step of the way. If you have any questions throughout class, you're welcome to enter them in the chat window. Ashley's going to be here helping me moderate. I just lost you, like as the principal um, part of as my- As a presenter? Yeah. Mm, give me a thumbs up. I'm looking at Pamela and Barbara. Can you all, can you ladies see me? Miss Alice, can see, Sandra? I can see you, but, well, I can see me, but I can't see you. Okay. Um, you may need to, there's a view icon in the top right-hand corner. Try changing it to speaker or hiding the self view, maybe that will help. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, one of the first things we're gonna do is we are going to paint the background first, okay? So we are going to mix a, a dark green color, maybe a bluish green to add some contrast. So that'll be a really beautiful start for us. So I have my palette, which is just where I'm gonna mix my paint colors. So I'm gonna mix colors with you too. And I'll show you what colors I'm using along the way for reference. 
So I have like a nice light green, any, any variation, whether you have like a grass green, this is kind of like a light grass green color, or if you have a phaleo green, you're going to mix your colors any way that you wish. So I'm just grabbing a green. And if you don't have a green, you can mix green by mixing yellow and a touch of blue together. So take a minute to mix a green if you need to. I'm putting some of this on my plate. And I absolutely love mixing blue and green together. This is just like one of the most beautiful colors to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little fun and different with the background colors tonight. I have a little bit of blue here. This is like a blue cobalt color, which is quite nice, but any kind of blue would be fine. And I'm mixing a bluish green. And the reason I'm doing this is it's different and it's gonna add a little bit of liveliness to our background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little scoop of this blue and I'm grabbing one of the bigger brushes I have and I'm going to grab a scoop of my green and I'm putting them in between together. And then we blend. So in these classes, I love to give us time to blend the colors that we like. So it looks like I need some more blue here. You can see it's more green than, than the combo color but I'm going just for a little bit of a combo. Ooh, see how it's getting a little bit of a terry green to it? So pretty. Use your eye and find a color here that you like. Art and creativity are all about the choices that you make. And whether you paint a lot or not, that's still a really valid point. So I have a really pretty like emerald green here. It's really quite nice. I'm gonna a little bit more blue because I'm a blue girl. I'm gonna stir this around. And as we are mixing this color, I just wanted to thank Ashley and the AARP New Hampshire group again for hosting and sponsoring tonight's event. We, these events would not be possible without their support. And I'm so grateful that you all are here making time for yourself. And if you have anyone with you in the room, a warm welcome to them too. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to use this bluish green color to put in the horizon line. And the horizon line is where the backdrop of the forest meets the ground. So I want to be intentional of where my green grass starts. And I want it to be high enough so I can put some trees down here. So I'm going to, it's not going to be quite a fourth, but you could do a fourth if you want. And I like holding this brush on the side so it has a more narrow brush stroke. And I'm gonna do a line across. Everything above this line is gonna be my forest backdrop. Everything below this is gonna be brighter green grass. And this is where my trees are gonna be, okay? Now I can always lower this line if I want to. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna add in, I want you to be creative, abstract, think outside the box with me for a little bit here. I want you to add in some bushes. So I want you to get a little abstract with me. Add some bushes down here. This is dark green for the background. Just have some fun. You can't do anything wrong here, I promise. Just add some bush-like bush detail. And this is gonna look like a fourth grader. It's okay. And we're gonna, I went up three, four inches and add a little bit of texture. Have some highs, have some lows. See how this is a little uneven here? That's a good thing. So we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna experiment with the background. I also just dip my brush in a little bit of water. Now I love, love, love using this water technique in my classes because it helps blend these colors and move them around a little bit. So put a little bit of muscle, a little bit of elbow, and you can see the paint pigment move a little bit. Maybe you grab a little bit more paint, but we want it dark in contrast down here at the bottom. So it's not gonna look messy like this everywhere, I promise, but we're just adding in a little bit of green space. 
And then maybe I'll just add a little bit more up here, but I'm gonna hold a little bit of white space. So just the, where the white space is, we're gonna add some lighter green trees. So imagine there's like a darker tree tucked in here. And have fun with this. You can't really go wrong. Just try to be abstract. And if, if you need to loosen up a little bit, hold your brush a little further back. Kind of creating a little floating tree right here. That's okay. We're going to add some fun coloring in this space. Maybe there's a little bit of a dark green here. And we're starting to create some layers within our forest. Now we are going to add leaves in here, I promise. <laughs> it's not just going to be all a little crazy here and there. But I'm going to add a little bit of a dark tree here and a dark tree over here. And you can kind of make them look like trees if you want a little bit. We're really just kind of starting to build the scene. And I promise I'm dipping, I dip my brush in a little water. It will all come together. Sometimes it's about trusting the process. And look at what I'm doing here. I put a little water on my brush and see how it's giving me a lighter green. How pretty is that? So feel free, and you can see how much paint is on my brush. Not much at all. Use a little water. And if you want to fill in some of this white space, just a little bit, with some of this lighter green, you can. And this is just water, and this is just the, the bluish green that I have here. Now, some of you who don't like abstract or this isn't um, as structured as you like. Just take a deep breath. I promise I will get you through tonight's painting. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to, to uh, visualize what we're doing, but just this is a great opportunity just to be playful and to visualize the experience. So I really just have a darker set here at the bottom. And then I did some darker kind of tree-like structures in the distance. This darker tree is, this is gonna be one of the darkest spots on the entire canvas. We're gonna be lightening it up from here. So don't worry too much. Okay. Everybody's doing great. If anybody wants to kind of take it to the next level, you can see here, I have some of this green. This is like a grass green. If you wanna have a little fun, you can kind of use some of this grass green and just start to like tuck it in. This is kind of a second layer. So if anybody's new to using acrylic paint or you haven't painted in a while, I'm just kind of being playful and adding a little bit of this grass green in, just like as a fun second layer or texture. And you can put it anywhere and I'm doing it on the darker colors, but you can see how it's adding a little bit of lightness, which is really fun. But if you're new to acrylics, especially in these classes, we do some layers and we let it dry and then we'll do some more layering on top. So this might look really abstract to you. Just trust the process that we're gonna add leaves in. We're gonna make it come to life a little more, but these are all just fun background colors, okay? You could even put a little water on your brush with that other green, if you have a lighter green and you could just, Fill in all those white nooks and crannies. We don't want any white coming through in our forest right here. So fill this in with some darks and lights. And we're just going to keep working our way up. Okay. And it might look a little segmented. Looks like I have these floating objects. Don't worry. We're going we're gonna to blend it together. Okay. So maybe for some of our transition, I have some of this grass green. I could keep moving this up a little bit. So maybe I create a second tier of trees. Look at this. And this is your own imagination. I'm creating a second tier of trees with this secondary color. I'm wiping off my brush a little bit. I'm getting a little water. And while this is wet, I can blend this in. You can make these look abstract. You can make these look like trees. This is where you can do you here, but have fun. Art is such a great way 
to experiment. I'm not going to make them look like trees too much because I'm going to um, I'm going to add some more like detail on top. So I don't want to make it too definitive, but I like adding the color in. And some of your painting may look messy right now. Don't worry. Just trust the process. We're just getting some colors on within this space. And we're going to come back in and add some more details. But we're being really intentional right now about using our darker colors at the bottom. And we're going to slowly get lighter as we work our way to the top. OK. So you can play with how you get lighter with your colors. Okay, so one way to get lighter, mine looks, you know, very Van Gogh, messy, abstract. It's okay. Trust me, it's okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of white paint and I'm going to start to create some lighter tones of green, maybe greenish blue to start blending in towards the top. So no matter where you're at, I want you just to be playful with the colors that you have and just know we're going to add leaf like shapes in here. Okay, we're going to make it look like trees in the background. So trust that part of the process. The other color. Um, yeah, we'll wait for the, we're going to bring in yellow in a little bit, but I have some white right here. So I might take some of this grass green and a little bit of white. And let me just see if I can make it a little lighter. Look at that. So again, take your time with blending. And I'm just going to bring in that's not light enough. I'm just going to bring in, and I'm going to be very kind of abstract with my forms. And you can see I'm doing a little on the left and I'm doing a little on the right. And I'm going to bring in some of the bluish green up here too. It's going to be so pretty. But be open-minded to the, the forms we're creating here. I know it looks a little strange, but it will look better, I promise. And then I have this fun bluish green right here. And I'm gonna add some white to this. I love this bluish green and I'm getting this really beautiful, it's like a pastel kind of country bluish green color. So pretty. On the zoom, it looks a little mossy, but look at this, it's, it's so pretty. And you can use water and see how much lighter it is at the top. So pretty. And you can use water to kind of blend these all together. So you can see I'm tucking in this bluish green at the top. And we're just creating some color backdrop. And I'm going to put a little water on my brush, ladies and gents. And I'm just going to start to blend this in. And the nice thing is, with a little water, it will smooth over on top of the other layers. I'm doing some nice, smooth brush strokes, soft flicks like a one, two, one, two with a little water. And it's really helping blend in some of these colors. And it's with a soft hand. I'm not pushing down that hard, but put a little water in. You can see how nicely it blended up there on the top. And you can do that anywhere. And again, just to reinstate, acrylic dries quickly. So if you have some more messy down here and you're like, oh, Megan, I like the way that it's smooth up on the top. I want to do that everywhere. You can as your second coat, which is really quite fun. So this is nice and smooth. It's a little lighter, which is nice. We're going to put big birch trees in the front. So we're doing, we're doing great. But play with using a little paint on your brush. I'm doing horizontal, smooth kind of horizontal brush strokes. I'm making the top look a little more wispy, but if you like the way that looks, you can kind of carry that down a little bit. But I want you to be happy with some of the colors. So for me, I'm coming in and grabbing a little bit of the green. You can kind of go over some of the things you had to smooth it over. Ashley, thank you so much for joining. All right. So just be playful here. On, I want you to be happy with just like the base colors. And we are going to add some tree detail here as well. 
So I might take some, if some of these objects are quite stern for you or too abstract, I'll show you how to soften these a little bit up. So I just put some of this bluish green on my brush. I'm gonna put some water on my brush too. And I'll go back and get a little bit of this bluish green with a little water. You can kind of soften some of these. I have a lot of different paints on my brush. I didn't do a good job of cleaning it off. But you can soften some of these shapes. We do want that green contrast to be there, but if you need to soften it and to kind of re-blend it, you're welcome to do so. So I just softened it a little bit. I still want to see these shapes because I'm going to put some nice green leaves on top. But you can use your finger to smudge. Sometimes that's really fun. So I put a little bit of this watery paint on top and I'm smudging it in. It's just kind of softening the edges a little bit. If you don't like to get your fingers dirty, you can use your paper towel. See, it's just really softening the edges, but it's still holding some of the shapes. This is gonna be a beautiful uh, abstract backdrop for our birch tree scene. So trusting the process a little bit. We don't always do abstract things like this in these classes. We, we do a lot of nature. We do we do a lot of fun things, like fun and light things, but um, we always like to mix it up a little bit. But we're always here to teach you something new. All right. All right, so I'm having fun. I really like some of these objects. And visually, I'm just really imagining and try to use your imagination here of the scene we're creating. There's kind of a darker forest. And then it's getting a little brighter, a little more airy towards the top of the forest, okay? And that's really gonna match the birch trees we're gonna be putting on top, all right? So I'm, I am fairly happy with my, my abstract here. We are gonna add some leaves to make this look a little bit more natural. So I am gonna slowly pivot to cleaning my brush. We'll paint the bottom beautiful greens, lighter greens on the bottom. And then I'll show you how to add some leaf-like textures within this space, okay? But if you need to keep working and play with your abstract background, that's absolutely fine, you do that. For the bottom, I am gonna put a little yellow on my plate. This is like a sunshine yellow, it's pretty bright, or a lemon yellow. You can use any color yellow that you have. Um, if you don't, if you, I would use a medium yellow or a lemon yellow. If you have like an okra, you may not get the brightness that we want here, but you can make those choices. So always choose your favorite colors. That's the most important thing. So this is going to be really fun. So I cleaned my big brush. And then when you're ready, we're going to paint the bottom green grass. A, I'm going to mix my... I'm gonna mix my light green, which was this, with a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna brighten it. Kind of like the sun is shining. Oh, so glorious. And I'll mix this color with you so you can see it. I want to be a little brighter on the grass, like the sun is shining. So find a green that's similar to above, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter. And I'm mixing that yellow. And always take your time mixing. This is really fun. All right. I could even go brighter, but I'm going to start here. So I didn't mix any white with this yet. We'll probably do some additional touch ups, but this is a really easy part. You can basically paint the entire bottom this color. I like to outline the, the horizon line first just so it's nice and clean. You can always go over this again. This is just something I like to do that's fairly satisfying. And I do want this to be a little brighter. So for me, it's very similar to these colors. So I'm gonna get a little crazy here. In these classes, I love taking risks on showing you what it's like to mix a new color or do something a little different. So look at that I added more yellow and that's real good, real pretty. All right, so I'm gonna paint this entire bottom. 
this green. And it, you can see it's much lighter. One of the things you can do, and I'm using this half inch brush, while the paint is wet, ladies and gents, dip your brush in a little water without it dripping droplets, right? So I dip my brush in water, it's not dripping. Use this, look at this, put a little pressure, use this water, smooth horizontal brush strokes to fill in your grass. See how it brightened it up? It's because we added water and it changed the opacity of the paint pigment. And I'm putting pressure and I'm working my way down. And I'm doing a single brush stroke from the left to the right. And look at that beautiful gradient. So pretty. It's bright, it's airy. We need to grab a little more paint, grab a little more paint. I'm gonna grab a little bit more water. And my bottom, I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a little bit more punchy, but I can do that as an accent detail. But just paint this a color that you like. I went brighter. It's really complimenting this, uh, this forest, abstract forest scene that I've created here. And some of you may not be abstract and you may have just painted trees up top. And guess what? That's okay. In this class, I will always, in all of my classes, I'll always encourage you to be yourself. And I encourage you to break the rules. So these classes are meant for you to enjoy the time and try different things when you're ready, okay? Look at that beautiful, brighter, contrasting green background down here on the bottom for the grass that really complements our, our nature, our abstract nature scene here on the top, okay? So I am gonna keep an eye on the time. We're doing fairly well, but there are a few details I want us to add that's fairly detail oriented. And I think many of you will like this. If you're itching to do more structured details, you're really gonna be like, phew, thanks Megan, now I can play with the details here. Um, so if you need to take like another five or 10 minutes to play around with the background or the grass, feel free to do that. Um, the birch trees um, are, and a lot of the detail for the birch trees, and even this next step is gonna take a little time. So I'll start the next step. If you are not ready to join me, you can, again, take your time and you can easily catch up, okay? So to rewind, one of the things that we did intentionally with this background is we have darker segments of our darker forest, right? Which is some of this bush-like detail we've added. And then we have some lighter areas. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add with a small brush of your choice, we're gonna add light green leaf-like detail on the tops to complement some of the darker accents. And we're gonna add some darker green leaf-like detail to complement some of the lighter areas. So that's gonna bring our plain basic colors and with adding a little leaf-like detail, it's gonna bring it to life, okay? So this was like my dark bluish green color. I have a tiny brush here. This is a number one. I want you to find a brush that has a nice point on it, something that you enjoy. And I'll show you my colors. I have this, the color I use for the grass is what I'm gonna use for the lighter green leaf detail. So I'm gonna get some of this paint on my brush and I'm gonna be a little abstract. I'm gonna be a little detailed. So what you're gonna do is on the top side of these trees and bushes on the dark green, you're gonna add some leaf-like structures. So you're just gonna add a little bit of detail. And I'm gonna bring this really close so you can see what I'm doing. So on the top side of this bush, I'm just gonna add some little leaf-like specks. Now, if you did a tree here, that's fine, but I'm just adding a little, just a little bit of soft texture. And if you wanna be really deliberate, 
and do true like leaf-like shapes you can. But you can see here, and it's very subtle, and you're gonna need a couple coats of paint. And we'll come in with secondary colors, but we're just adding a little texture, a lighter green texture to some of this darker green. Now this is all just for detail on the distance. So you can also come in and you could grab a little bit of blue on your brush. You can do different colors layered in here. This is just some texture for just the top side of these bushes. I'm going fairly abstract, but you can kind of do any texture that you wish. And mine is very subtle. If you want this to stand out more, you can use, I'll make another color so you can see the difference. A little white, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of green. And this will really brighten the color. So if you want to see something a little like lighter, I'm not going to do too much of this, but you can see how much bolder this is. Okay. So I'm not going to do too much of that. It's a little too light for me. I'm going to actually paint over some of it. And I'm just doing a little bit of accent detail. The nice thing is, is that you can do a little bit of this lighter accent detail on the top side of your bushes. And then if it's too, too light for you, you can go back in and grab some of the darker color and just kind of like paint over a little bit. You can kind of like dim it down. So this is just a really fun process to add a little texture to this top side of this trees. And you can see I went in here with a little bit of the darker green again, just to kind of like dim it down. You could also be playful. You could do a little smudging with your finger. This is another really fun trick, especially while it's still wet. You can kind of smudge it in, which is really pretty. Just on the top sides. You can use a little bit of the dark, a little bit of the dark. See how it's creating just a little bit of like lighter texture on the top side. It's really quite pretty. So maybe try a little bit of the light green, smudge your finger around, see what happens with the little friendly smudging. A little bit of green. So this is really abstract. We don't always do techniques like this, but it's really fun. It matches. Okay, see how it just added just another layer. It kind of added a little bit of highlighting to the top of those trees. We're gonna do the same thing. So maybe find some edges of the darker trees up here on the top and maybe do a little smudging with your finger and just blend a little bit of some lighter colors in. And see how it's creating some lighter aspects of the tree. See the difference? And if you have too much lightness, guess what? Go back to that green. So this is pretty abstract, but this is so fun because we're adding in a little bit of lightness to some of our darker areas. And they, they kind of look like clouds a little bit, but they're trees, right? You have to use your imagination here. So I'm going just on the edges of these dark green, of these dark green trees with a lighter green. And look at that. It's adding some really beautiful highlighting and details. So if you want to do leaf-like structure, you can. If you want to do some of this smudging like I'm doing, you can do that too. So you're the artist. You are make to make some of these choices. So I'm just, I'm doing all of the dark objects first with a little bit of the lighter green. And if, if it gets too smudgy, just let it dry. Just know you can always go back and paint on top of it but it's kind of a fun process just to try. There's no risk in this. There's no risk in any of this. We're just trying something new together. And if you wanted to be more deliberate with some actual leaf-like shapes, you absolutely can do that, okay? 100%. But I'm showing you a little bit of an abstract approach and you can see how the colors really start to stand out. Those darker colors have not gone away for me, which is really important. And 
I may even come in here and still add just like a few leaf-like details, just like a few little dots here and there. This is where your creativity comes out. Don't overthink it. I'm just doing little tiny green dots to add a little bit of tree-like detail to the tops. So this is just follow your intuition and be playful, okay? This is definitely a, a be playful type of style here tonight. <laughs> Okay, and we're doing all these background details first because we're gonna put all those big, beautiful birch trees on top. And I have to say in a lot of my classes, we don't always go this um, extravagant with the background, but I wanted to take a few minutes to do this with you and we're only gonna spend another few minutes to do the background um, and then we'll shift. But I wanted to do this with you to show you what it's like because when you take the time to do some fun details like this in the background, these magical things can happen. Okay, I'll hold it close here for a minute. And if anybody's taken this class with me before, these classes, um, you're probably like, we have never done anything so different like this. And I'm, it's so exciting just to continue to do new things together. All right, so we're going to do the same thing where you might want to add some darker green detail to some of these lighter areas. So this is optional, but you can kind of add in some darker green contrast in any areas that you want. So if you like the way something looks, then just leave that area. But if you wanted to add some darker green in any areas, you can put a little bit maybe up here, maybe on these trees up here these green trees. I'm going to take a little water. You could also put a little water on your brush too or on your finger. Do a little smudging up here. And if I kind of cover up some of my lighter green, I can always add my lighter green back in. So I'm having a little fun with a little smudging up here. Sometimes smudging can get a little out of control. So I'm not going to go too crazy. But I want you to be happy with your background. So as a group, we're going to spend another, oh, I don't know. I'll give us another two solid minutes to play around with the background. That might make some of you sweat, but we're going to move on. I'm going to be mindful of the time. I'm kind of softening this strange green blob that has formed just with some lighter colors up here. There we go. You can always cover something up. You can always add more paint to kind of restructure something. Look at that. I softened that whole top up there. Kind of it's like a whole cloud to just like move through. <laughs> Megan, you did a class a while ago with some abstract fish and I'm painting over that for this and the fish oh, are coming, coming through. <laughs> I love, oh, they're coming through? No, they're, they're creating the mountains, <laughs> the trees. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you have some mountains coming through. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, so you can reshape those fish if you need to. <laughs> I love that. Oh, was it the koi fish? From a while ago, it might be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. That was a great class. Awesome. So I want everybody, I'm going to keep an eye on the clock. I'm going to hold everybody accountable here. I am happy with my fun, abstract, different background. When you're at a point where you're like, I think I'm done, I'm just going to clean my brush and move on. We're going to add more detail. Terry, great to see you too. I'm so glad you're here. All right. So many wonderful folks. We do these classes with AARP, typically month, AARP New Hampshire, typically monthly, but um, there are additional classes that I offer. So if anybody's interested in learning more, definitely let me know. Um, but we're gonna do more detail down here on the grass after. All right, so I want you, your background to be drying. Mine's fairly dry. The details I was adding wasn't really creating too much wetness. So one really important thing for our next steps are for your background to be dry. And 
uh, we're going to be doing some sketching for our birch trees, which is quite lovely. And we're also going to be doing some streaks for our sunlight coming in. So we might add those streaks for the sunlight coming in first. So I might clean this, this big brush of mine here. And we'll do some sunlight streaks coming in. And then we'll do our birch trees on top of the sun, the streaks. So the um, birch trees are kind of layered on top of this, the streaks, which would be kind of fun. So if you're following me here, I'm cleaning my big brush well as a next step. We're gonna do some sunlight streaks in the sky. And then we will do our birch tree outlines on top. So if you need a couple more minutes, again, take your time. I am taking a little bit of white paint and I'm going to make a water wash. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna find a clean part of my plate. I'm gonna put it in a well. So I have a well right here that I'm not using. And I'm gonna put some water in it. And I, I'm doing a three dollops of water from my water cup. My water cup is green paint. Guess what, or green colored, it's okay. And I'm mixing my white paint and my droplets of water and I'm making a milk-like consistency, okay? And I'll show you what my brush looks like. It looks like I just dipped it in a glass of milk, okay? Now you could test what this is gonna do. I'm just gonna show you on my hand, I guess. So it gives you a nice clean, that's a lot, but you can see it's like a nice, it's a soft opacity of white, okay? Now, I want you to get some of that on your brush. I don't want it to be dripping from your brush. So if it's dripping, kind of give it a one, two, kind of wipe on the side of your plate. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do two primary streaks coming from the top left side over and down. It's gonna, this, the sunlight is gonna stop at the grass, okay? So if you have like your arm here, you can kind of play with that. So I am going to be confident. I'm gonna hold my brush on the side first. So you can, you have a more narrow brush stroke and you want it to be a kind of a straight diagonal line. And you're gonna come off the page. See that sun ray I just created? It's beaming, okay? You want your angles to all be fairly the same. And you want them to be straight. So if there was a ruler here, and you're doing them light at first because you can always make them darker. See that? So I do the narrow brush strokes so you can see how the opacity is. So mine came out perfect the first time, which is kind of surprising. But I'm gonna do my wide brush stroke and go over it so it's a little bit wider. Now I want it to be soft like that in color. And I'm doing two that are fairly the same. I'm just, I'm gonna tuck in an odd number of these, okay? So maybe, I'm gonna keep my hand here because that helped me with my structure a little bit. I'm gonna do a narrow one here. And if you wanna smudge it with your finger, Smudge it with your finger. See how I just softened that with my finger? Pretty. And you can just do like a little bit, smudge it with your finger. Helps it tailor off. See those sunbeams coming in? A little, a little scary, but definitely rewarding. If you happen to have too much paint on your picture, just take a wet paper towel and kind of wipe over it and it should come right off. Okay, so I just did a little bit here, a little bit there. I like smudging with your finger, that helps tremendously. So I have some nice beams coming in. You get to choose on how bright these are, how much, how white they are, or how soft they are. So you can stop with your beams, <laughs> sunbeams, 
when you feel like they're good enough. And maybe you add a couple small ones up top. I am just using my eye. And I, I think I'm almost done. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to soften the top corner a little bit with a little bit lighter of a paint. Sorry, with this white paint. I'm just going to soften kind of this top right corner just so it's a little brighter up here. And I, I was already light in my sky, but you can see how it's really kind of starting to cast extra lightness. And look how much paint's on my brush. Hardly any at all. I'm kind of making it misty a little bit in this top corner. Nice and soft. Okay. So now I have to make a choice as an artist, just like all of you, if I want to add more sunbeams or not. Um, let's see. I think I'm close. I might make this one. Again, you can rotate your brush on the side. You can have that narrow brush stroke or that wide brush stroke. But I think I'm close here. This one in the middle is really bright in the inspiration. And the inspiration is in the chat window. I will repost the inspiration in the chat window because we have some more folks that showed up. So I'm going to repost that for you. But I'm fairly happy with my sunbeams coming in over my forest. So let me go ahead and re-upload the inspiration. So folks have that. All right, let's see here. So when you're done with those sunbeams, go ahead and just clean off your brush. And we're gonna do some sketching for our birch trees next. Now, if you don't wanna sketch your birch trees, you don't have to. Um, you're welcome to use a pencil and do sketching. Um, due to the time, I think that I might just freehand the birch trees. So I think that if you wanna just do this with me, I promise I'll go step-by-step. Step. I'll show you the number of birch trees and the size of the birch trees. So I'm going to freehand these birch trees because birch trees are just telephone poles. We can all make telephone poles together here. All right. So the size of the brush, I'm going to shift us to birch trees next. Size of the brush I'm using is, it's a number three. So it's kind of like a nice long tip, round tip brush. It, has, it will hold some a good amount of paint. That's important for me. And you're going to need white paint to get started. Uh, if you don't want to use just white paint for your birch trees, you can mix, you can make a light gray to start. That's always another option. Um, so maybe I'll just do that. I'll make a little bit of a light gray. And it's still going to be fairly white in color, but will allow us to, I'm just going to mix a light gray right here. Allow us to use the white as like a, a highlighter for our birch trees, right? If the, if the mid color, the base color of the trees is a gray, then we can add the white on one side of the tree to really make it stand out. So I'll show you what my gray looks like. My lighting is a little off here. Let's see. There. So this is just like a nice light, like Heather Gray. And we're going to do placement of birch trees first. Okay. So we're doing like an odd number of birch trees and we're going to do uh, two big ones first or two medium sized ones. And the first birch tree is gonna start down here in the middle of the grass. So I'm gonna do a line on where I want the bottom of the birch tree to be. Do a more narrow line. It just gives you, like for me, I know that's how wide I want it to be. But then I'm gonna kind of come up and make a T. Um, if you ran out of white, you can just do a, um, you could do, um, like yellow trees, you could do a, you could do brown trees. That would be fine. You could definitely use brown tree trunks. And to make brown, it's red and green, or it is, you can mix red, blue, and white, uh, red, blue, and yellow together. All those three colors will make brown as well. So what you're going to do is I'm going to, I did the bottom placement for my tree. I'm going to run my finger up straight and I'm going to do a long line for my birch tree. And you want it to be like fairly straight, but my tree is gonna be wider than this, so it's okay. And then you can slowly start just to outline how wide you want your birch tree to be. 
this is going to be one of your bigger trees. So you as an artist, you get a choice of, of how big you actually want it. So just fill the tree in once you've done that single line up. And the bottom of the tree is a little wider. And this is a gray color. So I'll mix a little bit more. You'll need a good amount of white for the class for these birch trees, but you'll be all right. If you don't have white, you can turn your trees brown. No big deal. All right, so. Just fill in the birch tree. That will just start nice and easy. And this tree is gonna get a little more narrow to the top. It's a little bendy. Guess what? Trees don't have to be straight, right? Who said trees have to be straight? Fairly straight, right? So just take your time. If anyone has any questions, even after class, you're welcome to contact me. Um, my website is paintandsipvt.com. I'll put my contact info in the chat so you have it. You're welcome to email me, write. My website has lots of ways to contact me. So you're welcome to reach out with any questions. I also love to see your artwork. If you wanted to share that after class, we would love to see that. Right. Thank you. Is there yeah. any, hi, is there any way that you can post, because my chat keeps moving, I keep losing the picture. Is there any way you can post it to the left of you so it can just be there the whole time? Because yeah, I can print it and put it next to me. No problem. Were those I, oranges, right? There's oranges there on the wall. Yeah, I have that artwork in the background. I'm happy yeah. to post it and yeah, take it. No problem. That would be great. Thanks. You got it. No worries. I'm printing it right now. How convenient. I have a printer in my studio. <laughs> I'll put it right here next door. I should have mentioned that before. I kept scrolling and I kept losing. I know, it's tricky. Sometimes you can double click on the image and put the image oh, next God. to your window. That's oh. what I've done typically in the past. But the, oh. I will have a printout available in 30 seconds here. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, so I'm just doing my first tree. Is it perfect? No. Is it a birch tree? Absolutely. <laughs> We don't strive for perfection in these classes. We're here to have a good time. So just what make sure you're smiling. Oops. What color is the base? The base is a light gray. So white and what? What? Uh, what white and a little tiny touch of black. Oh. Yeah. It almost looks like a cream color. Yeah, it's um, um it's gray here in person. Let me go get that printout for you. I'm just fixing my tree because it was a little bendy here in the middle. But now I just have an extra knot on the side, which makes it look even more natural, right? <laughs> All right, this is perfect. This is exactly what you need here. So I have a printout, I'll put it right next door. Let me grab some tape. This should be helpful for you. The color isn't too potent, but you can actually see the the form at least, right? Yes, thank you. It's perfect. Okay, you're most welcome. Okay, so ladies and gents, you're gonna keep plugging away here, okay? So um, I am going to, I gotta make some more of this gray because I'm just going right through it. So to make my gray, I have white right here and I'm just taking a little, tiny dollop of black and I'm mixing a dark gray. So the placement of your trees is important. So this one was down here. You're going to stagger where you put them. So my next tree is going to be over here and it's not going to be this big and I can always fix the shape of that. I'm not too worried. But the next tree is going to be over on the right and it's going to be a little higher than the base of that one. So I'm just putting a little dot and then I'm going to do a line straight up. And I'm going to put my second tree in place. Now you can do all really skinny trees if you want. I'm going to do a much more thin trees for the rest. But these are just some of the bigger ones. 
So you can hold your canvas with your hand. I'm just gonna come in. We will brighten these trees. We're gonna add a lot of texture. These are all just the base coats. And just breathe through these steps. Enjoy the process. Know that you are in good hands. And we will make these look like trees, I promise. All right. Bottoms can be a little wider. And we're gonna do a lot more detail on these, but we're just getting those base coats in. I'm going to do um, another tree over here, a little higher, and it's gonna be a little skinnier. So I'm gonna be really mindful of how delicate my brush stroke is for my tree trunk. So some of you might just have bigger trees, it's okay. But one of the things I love teaching in these classes is a little bit of mindfulness and the, the recognition of considering how big or how small your trees are when you're painting them. So I like talking about it because it allows you to recognize with, with your shapes and what you're painting tonight. So that's a really fairly thin tree. I can make it a little thicker. So you get to decide the number of trees you add. The more trees you add, the longer it's gonna take um, to paint everything. But I'm gonna do, I would choose an odd number of trees, no matter what your choice is. And I'm just making this tree nice and solid. You want smooth, even brush strokes on each side of the tree. And this is where your scene is really gonna start to come to life. You're gonna notice this beautiful scene in the background. Okay. See, I stagger the placement of my trunks. That was really important. So I'm just gonna keep going. If you need to mix more paint along the way, feel free. I'm doing that too. You need to use a smaller brush, downsize to a smaller brush, very important. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stagger the trunk and this tree is gonna be a little further back. I'm just gonna put a dot for the bottom of the tree and I'm going to, with a nice slow hand, do another tree trunk up. this scene has like eight trees so it's a little time consuming I was telling Ashley before the class I was like there's so much detail in this painting it's gonna take the, it's gonna take the time but it's gonna be absolutely worth it and many people who take these classes you spend a little bit of extra time sometimes refining the details but pay attention to the width of the trees you want small trees and big trees the saplings go a long way within our forest. And we will add some secondary branches and some primary branches off of some of these trees, but we're gonna get all the tree trunks in first. Just kind of helps ground our birch forest here. So I'm, and you can do some birch trees that maybe lean one way or another, so they don't have to be perfectly straight. I'll show you an example of that. So I'll do another birch tree, again, staggering the height of where the trunk is. Maybe this birch tree will be leaning a little bit just to show you what it's like to do something a little different. That birch tree is leaning a little bit to the left. Looks nice and natural. Using my pinky, to stabilize my hand as I'm outlining the tree trunk. 
Okay. And I'm so glad that you're all here. It's so nice to meet you. Some of you are new. Some of you have been here before. I'm so glad you're here either way. And I'm going to be, I want to be thoughtful of, okay, how many more trees, Megan, do I want to add? <laughs> so I'm going to add, um, I'll add one here and I'll add one up here. And I'm just going to add one more down here. So I'm doing little dots on where I want to do the final placements of my trees. And some of these trees can be like um, close to each other or maybe joining a little bit. So this tree might come up straight. Oh, it wants to go to the right. Apparently this tree wanted to go to the right. That was not a part of my plan, but guess what? It's okay. Sometimes your art just takes over. I was gonna have one go off another, but this one's just going to go straight behind it, I guess. <laughs> you want your trees to have a nice, uh, nice clean edging. So I usually do a second coat over the edges of the tree trunks, just so they're, the edges are nice and clean. And we will add like that birch like detail. And then this tree, I guess this tree is just going to come up straight. And these are narrow. I love doing narrow birch trees. They're a little invigorating here. Such a beautiful scene. And this is a really, this is definitely a time consuming uh, inspiration. We don't always do things this complex, but I know that the AARP community, most of you typically really love the outdoors and you love the birch, you love birch trees and we don't do enough birch trees. So I was just a little bit of a treat to do something a little complex, a little different. But we, we'll do easier things too, I promise. <laughs> All right. So I have one more like basic tree to paint and then I'll show you how to do some secondary branches. You wanna use, uh, if you're moving to your secondary branches already in your primaries, do uh, use the smallest brush that you have is my recommendation. And I'm gonna do one more tree over here. And then I have a nice array of trees. I have eight trees. I told you to do an odd number, but for me, visually, this looks okay. <laughs> so uh, I broke my own rule of saying do an, an odd number, but take that with a grain of salt if your painting looks the way that you want it to look. <laughs> I think because I have a, a varying of size, that's why it looks natural. I always talk about mindfulness in these classes about like reflecting on your art, reflecting on the composition along the way, because that will help you decide if you should add any more trees or if you are happy with uh, your tree placements or tree sizes and you can make modifications. You can always make a small tree wider, but it's hard to make a big tree smaller, right? So it's just about starting small and then making some adjustments along the way. So I have a really fun, beautiful scene happening here. I really like where we're going. One thing you can do that's really easy that might feel relieving after all this detail is you can take a little bit of white paint and on the left side of every tree, add some white paint. And this is gonna make our birch trees really stand out. And you can even, you can do a little bit of blending, even with that gray, to blend that white right into the birch. I'm using the tip of the brush to kind of blend it over a little bit. Um, if you have brown, you can absolutely highlight the brown. Yeah, absolutely. You could use a yellow on the, the right side or the left side of the brown tree, absolutely. Yeah. If you didn't wanna use stark white, you could just mix that gray that you used with the tree and just mix a little bit of white with that to help with the, the blending. But put a little bit of white 
You could also, um, another easy thing to do here is putting a little bit of water with your white just to kind of soften it. That's a great way of doing this step is a little bit of white paint and a little water just to highlight the left side of every tree. And then you can kind of use the water to kind of blend it and soften it into the gray. And you want the gray, the, the gray to definitely stay on the right side, but you can see how it's softening the, the left side of the tree. So this is important. Birch trees have some really white, brilliant white areas, and they also have a lot of gray and black tones. I had someone in one of my classes once, and she actually might even be here. I don't remember exactly who it was. Um, and she took pictures of birch trees before one of our last birch classes. And she said, Megan, birch trees are really gray. And I said, you're right. I think they are really gray. Um, but they, and they have like a lot of darker black elements on them too. So it's really fun to just be open-minded and playful to what is nature really like um, and being open to the process. I love smudging with your finger here. It really helps it look a bit natural. So be playful here on where you add a little bit of white to your birch trees. You can be as simple, excuse me, or as straightforward as you wish. You can, you don't have to blend it. You could just do an outline. But that's a beautiful aspect and technique for tonight's class. On the left side of each birch tree, add a little bit of highlighting of white or a lighter gray. You can decide. And what we'll be doing is, is we'll add, be adding that birch-like detail on top of this. And we'll give some attention down to the grass area in just a moment. But this is where you can really start to appreciate all of your detail in the background. You can see it was very abstract, but you can see that there's a scene happening back there. And it was just, a, it's a subtle, soft, but like brilliant approach just to creating a little bit of a nature scene. And again, a little water on your brush is helpful for consideration. If you wanted to add a little water to your white, I am using my pinky finger to stabilize. I'm a lefty, so I use that to stabilize my hand. We will add some secondary branches to these trees, but we're just doing a little bit of this white first. Not gonna change anything. So these trees can be as bright or subtle with gray as you wish, it's your choice. But I hope everyone's having a great time. I will drop my contact info in the chat just so folks have that before we, everybody can see this here. Okay, so I'll put my website. I'll also drop in my email address. If anyone has questions about their artwork, wants to share a picture with me, um, I encourage you to do that. I always love seeing your artwork. All right, so I have my gray birch trees in and I have my white highlighted lines. If anyone wants to with a tiny brush, you can add some of those primary branches coming off. I'm grabbing a smaller brush because usually branches off primary tree trunks are smaller. So one of the smallest brushes I have is a, it's a number one tonight. It's, I sometimes have the two slash zero fraction brushes, um, but I'm just gonna use this gray. And I'm going to do just a few high. So my secondary branch, my primary branches are going to be on the top half of these trees. And you can do, oh, Roxy, I'm so glad you're having fun tonight. It's awesome. I'm just doing some thin, 
primary branches kind of coming off. So some of these primaries can have little secondaries. And again, we wouldn't be here tonight without AARP New Hampshire. So be sure to check out their resources and links. It's a fantastic organization. I absolutely love working with them. So look, there's a primary branch. So fun. So you can do as many um, or as few of these branches as you wish. Just use your eye. Okay, that's the most important thing. Kind of check yourself. <laughs> you don't need to add a lot of these. But you can see how the thin branches are just a really beautiful complement to the work. So you can see I'm just layering in a few and it's really just gonna start to create a little bit of a tree like branch scene at the top. So I'm using a really thin brush. I'm using my gray paint. And one of the ways that I do branches, and I call the primary branches are the ones that come directly off the trunk. I like to do, uh, you can play with the angle. So these are kind of diagonal angles, but I do one on the right, which is what this one was. And then I go a little higher and I do one on the left. So I kind of stagger from the left to the right and you can change the angles. So for me, I'm happy with the number of branches visually in this top corner. So I'm just gonna work my way over and say, okay, where else may I wanna add some branches? So a primary again is a branch coming off the trunk. And then I do secondaries the same way that I do primaries, but I, I stagger from the left to the right. I kind of work my way up the trunk. So I added this little one right here. And you don't need too much. You can make a choice if you want to add some lower branches. You can even add a little water to this gray. So I'm running out of this gray and I'm adding a little water to this to stretch it. And that's all you need. It's amazing. So I'm just going to do branch coming up. And then you can do a couple of single primaries. I'm just using the tip of my brush and putting a little bit of water, ladies and gents, is magical for these branches because it's making it so delicate and so easy for these just to flow. They can go on top of other branches. It's okay. You don't need to go behind every branch. They can go on top. Sometimes it's a little stressful. People are like, where do I put the branch? Don't worry. You can see the scene that we're creating here. It's so beautiful. You can do a couple lower ones too. I'm using a really delicate hand. And look at what we're doing here. Remember the contrasts that we did in the background, that we did up to the foreground, up to the top. See how much this is all standing out now with our lighter birch trees? quite beautiful and we've really never done anything like this in our classes so I'm so grateful to share this experience with you some exclusive content here for our AARP friends all right I'm just gonna add a little bit more I really like these tiny little branches I'm feeling it tonight as an artist so sometimes you just have to follow your intuition and do as many of these little branches as you wish. So I'm really happy with the delicate, with the soft branches. I'm gonna be mindful of time. I'm gonna keep working, but I'm gonna switch us in just a minute. Start working on some of the birch-like detail. So I'm gonna lean back and reflect I really love the sizes of the trees. We have some bigger branches, we have some smaller branches. So I'm gonna be thoughtful and mindful as an artist to say, okay, I think I'm happy, I'm going to stop. That is something we all have to do, right? So I'm gonna clean my brush. 
anybody needs to go to the bathroom, grab a snack, stretch a little bit, maybe stretch your neck from the left to the right. Oh, stretch your back, put your arms in the air. This is a great stretching point. It's also an excellent point in class to show off our artwork. So I'm gonna remove the spotlight on me and I'm gonna to go to view and the gallery view. And if anybody, oh look, Susan's here. I didn't even know. And Lisa and Barbara, so many friends. <laughs> you all were hiding. If anybody wants to show your work, this is where we all get to show off our work to one another. So many people. Beautiful, Kim and Susan and Rochelle, Rochelle, beautiful job. Oh my goodness. And there's Miss Linda, Linda, beautiful. Carol and Lisa, Mary, very nice. Barbara, Ellen, you all nailed this. I'm so proud of you. Miss Ellen, beautiful job. Isn't this a magical scene? Oh my goodness. I love it so much. I hope you do too. Let me see if there's anyone else. We have lots of folks here. There's Debbie and there's Jill, Miss Jill Dean and Juliana. Oh, look, Terry's here too. Hey, Terry. <laughs> there's Terry's. And there's Miss Kim's. Oh, Kim, I like yours. It's a little darker, but I love the contrast. Beautiful. Thank you all for showing off your work. I'm switching through our pages here. We have lots of folks. Wonderful. Well, thank you for showing. It's always so much fun to see our evolution happen together. Okay, so we're gonna add some grays, like dark grays. We can add some of those patches to our trees, some of that fun birch-like detail. So I'm gonna make a dark gray and we're gonna kind of create some of this black patchwork. So I'm gonna use my tiny brush and I'm gonna just grab a little bit of black and I'm making kind of a darker gray. I get a little scared. I always go black at first, but the black actually looks really good. So I'm just gonna go for a darker gray initially. And then if I wanna make it darker, I can. So there's a lot of different type of detail. There is like notch-like detail. There is kind of scrape-like detail. I'm just gonna do, there's some of these like upwards, like arrows, I don't know. You can play with the texture a little bit, but you can do little dots and dashes. You can do some rounded areas. Just spread out your detail work. You can do kind of horizontal, kind of scratch like Maggie, marks. Wh what color did you mix with this the This is a dark gray color. Oh, it looks brown. Yeah, it's this, it's dark gray. It's right here. Oh, it's okay. black and white. Wow. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm being really abstract. I'm doing some horizontal scratch marks. I'm doing some like upside down rainbows. I'm just using a really light hand and just holding white space on the tree and just try to be a little abstract. I'm doing really soft, delicate brush strokes. And this is very, this is like as abstract as you can get. <laughs> so I'm just doing a little bit of, uh, this is like an upside down kind of tree knob. You can do some horizontal lines. You can do a couple of like vertical lines. If you want to mix like a, another secondary gray, you can add another secondary gray to kind of like tuck in here. I did like a, I'll bring this closer so you can see it. Very abstract and don't look too closely because it's it's, it's just my impressionism here of, of birch trees. But I'm using like a secondary gray too, just to kind of help it blend in a little bit more. It's just like Japanese or something. I don't know. This is my style for tonight. And you just embrace it, ladies we, and gents. We always have our own style. So just embrace the style and just kind of go with it. I did a lot of birch marks on that tree. I don't I went a little crazy, but it's okay. All right. So I'm just doing a little and you want to hold space. You don't want to cover up the whole birch tree. So just do one little mark, maybe move up 
And these trees in the distance, it's a little easier because they're just so tiny. So you can just do a little one, two dot and work your way up, do a one, two, do a one, alternate from the left to the right side of the tree. You could do little spots, that's okay. It's actually kind of working for me a little bit here. You can do a little, you can play with the tip of the brush. So using the bristles at the tip of the brush will help you give it a more natural scape. So don't use the whole brush. Don't do a hard push when you're doing these delicate details. See how many bristles are kind of popping out from the top of your brush and just use three or four of those bristles with this dark gray and just see what happens. Just doing one, two, kind of these little ones are actually easier because in the distance you can see they look like birches, but the detail is fairly subtle. So I could do a couple of like horizontal scratches. If you need to get a new brush, grab a new brush too. You don't have to settle for the brush you're using. Just see what other brushes you might have nearby. Okay, and I'm just gonna, you don't need to keep reapplying the paint either. You'll notice that pretty quickly here. That you don't need a lot of paint to apply some of these details. So again, you can do a little dot, you could do a horizontal scratch, you could do a vertical scratch. Imagine a little bear was climbing up these trees. What kind of marks would be on this tree? Right, that's always really fun to think about. Put a little water in this gray if you wanna thin it out a little bit. So fun. Absolutely would love to see your work after. So be sure to email me or check out my site and send me your info. And I may go back in here with a little bit of that lighter gray, just to like, especially on some of these bigger trees, like I went in with a little bit of a lighter gray on this big one, just to help soften some of the detail. Those are choices you can make as an artist. We are going to add a little bit of shading down on the bottom where the trees hit the grass. So we'll do that next after this birch detail. The base of these trees, there's a lot of shading happening. It's quite fun. If anyone has any questions along the way, again, do not hesitate to ask, but I love that you're all in your zone here, bringing your artwork to life. And you can do some incredible things if you can just kind of let go of fear and just be open-minded to the evolution. Many of you probably thought that I was crazy doing all those abstracts in the background, but you can see how those beautiful blends really just casted this beautiful, um, seen in the distance. And for me, I'm happy with it. Some of you may have done something a little different. It's okay. And if you have too much paint on your brush, you can always take some of it off. Like if you feel like it's going on too heavy, grab your paper towel, wipe your brush and just see if that helps. If you want to add any of this birch like detail on your branches, you could add a little bit on your branches. Going pretty abstract tonight with this birch like detail, but it's working, I think. Okay. I'll bring this closer so you can see how like truly abstract and different this is. Oh, Corinne, I'm so glad you're here. Great to see you. <laughs> Corinne's in Florida. Awesome. Finally, uh, it's good to be back, Megan. Yes. Well, big thanks for AARP New Hampshire for having us back doing these classes again. And we have a great 2014 lined up. Good. All right. So um, we're going to do a little bit of gray, like casting shadows. I'm going to get a little crazy. I have this gray from the birch bark. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here. 
ladies and gents. And uh, this class is recorded. So Ashley from AARP New Hampshire will be sending out the recording tomorrow. So if anybody wants to touch up on any of these details, you certainly can. And again, my contact info is in the chat window. Please reach out to say hi and share your work. We always love seeing that. But I made this like bluish gray and I'm gonna use this for the shadows because I think it'd be really pretty for these trees. So, um. At the bottom of these trees, I'm going to add, I'm going to just make them a little shady. Um, and I'm just going to be a little abstract about this. So bear with me, but I'm going to make the bottom of this tree a little dark. And then I'm going to cast a little bit of a shadow to the right side. And I'm just going so with a soft hand. Maybe I put a little bit of water on my brush. If you don't like how dark that is, you don't need to do it. Um, I guess what I can always take white and make it lighter. It's not a big deal. Um, but I'm going to take the shadow and I'm just going to bring the shadow over a little bit. And I have a little bit of water on my brush. So I'm just kind of softening this in. And you can always use your finger and smudge it a little bit too. Just adding a little bit of shading and underneath this tree. So if you wanted to add a little water, you could. I'm gonna do that under each of these. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadow, a little shading at the base of the tree. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a shadow to the right. Now I can use my finger to smudge. If it's right next to another tree, you can kind of like come behind it a little bit if you wanna create a little bit of an element here. So see how I went behind? That big one kind of carries the eye over. And I'm doing a little smear with my brush and I'm smearing it with my finger, which is kind of fun. See how it kind of gives it a little bit of a two-tone? It's kind of a fun thing. But play with this. A little water on your brush is really quite helpful for this step. So I'm doing a little bit of this bluish gray paint and a little water. So I'm just kind of adding a little depth to the bottom of these trees, kind of grounding the tree in. And I'm doing a little bit of this shade or shadow. And I'm do it at the bottom of all these trees. You can smudge it with your finger. Any way you want to be playful here. You want to do it a little to the other side too. You can always add it to the other side of the tree. I love the finger smudge, it works great. And then I'm just going to rinse and repeat. So I want this to be consistent for the most part. You can play with where you might want to add additional shadows. So you could take a little bit of this and say, I want a little bit of a dark shadow over here. I could just do a little smudge of the blue and then smear it with my finger just to add some additional shadows. So it's kind of just breaking up the bottom a little bit, which is kind of fun. You can experiment a little here. Water will help that paint pigment, not just stick. It will help it smear a little bit. So I'm just doing light, soft, feather-like brush strokes with my finger. Oh. I'm going to put a little more water on my brush. It makes it a little more forgiving. So you're going to get to a point where I don't want anybody to overdo it with these details. So be mindful of how much of the shading you're adding. But this bluish gray is beautiful for this space. And I'm just adding some thin brush strokes and just doing a gentle smudge. And I'm creating these soft shaded areas, which is really pretty. We haven't really done anything like that in these classes, which is so fun to see how things can evolve. Awesome. So pretty. So this is where you, again, participate in a little bit of that mindfulness of 
Okay, are you happy with where you're at? Do you wanna add anything else? Um, in the inspiration, there's some like gray paths built in. I don't think I need that. If anybody wants to see that, that's fine. Um, we're doing great for time. Um, outside of the details that we've already done, um, you can look at the sun streaks. If you wanted to make your sun streaks a little bit more bold, you could definitely do another water wash kind of coming in. Mine um, could be like brighter, um, in my opinion. They're kind of like subtle. Uh, so I could make those brighter. Um, which I could just paint over everything basically, and that would be fine. And then I could just touch up like some of the birch bark where the sun, the sunshine is coming in. The other thing that you can add is some leaves. Um, now we have, we're at 737 Eastern time. So these classes are typically an hour and a half to two hours. If you want to make this a fall birch scene, you could do orange and yellow leaves as accent details for your trees up top. You could add a few delicate leaves here and there. If you wanted to add a lighter green and some yellow leaves, you could do that as well. If you wanna keep this like stick season and have no leaves, you can do that too. So those are all the, some of the choices that you can make as an artist today. I may make my sun streaks a little bit more bold because I feel like I can do that. Um, so let me try making those a little more bold. Because I really like how that shows up in the inspiration. So for me, that's a choice I'm making of, I want to see that. Personally, that's something I wanted to do. And I'm even doing it on top of my um, birch detail and you can't really see the difference, so it's okay. But I'm just gonna do a little bit more. Then it could be subtle, but now it's a little bit more clear. So we're all gonna kind of make some of those choices, right? Um, where you wanna spend any extra time tonight on your artwork. I could make that top left corner a little bit more bright. I'm just making a little bit more of my water wash. It's important that my consistency isn't too Hot or cold, right? Kind of like porridge. It's not too thick or too thin. And you can always use your fingers to smudge. I can make it a little bit more um, softer on the top corner up here just by doing a little bit lighter. So I'm just doing some water wash again on top of everything in this top corner. Just to kind of soften, those are all choices you can make. Um, I'll show you what it's like to add a little bit of uh, light green uh, leaves, just to show you. I'm gonna be very delicate about it, but I'll show it to you for sanity's sake. Um, if anyone has to leave, I totally understand. I just wanna thank everyone again for being here and thanking AARP New Hampshire for having us. Um, be sure to check out the resources that Ashley posted with regards to caregiving whether you are new to caregiving or you are in it. Um, I applaud you, it's, it's a tough thing. And um, with the resourcing that AARP offers, um, it's a really, it's a nice resource, many resources actually to have. So check those out. Uh, and again, my website is listed if you wanna reach out with any questions or get in touch. But I'm making like a nice light green right here. It's actually kind of like a yellowish green. So I'm gonna add a little yellow to this. kind of like a mossy yellow green and that's a nice color right there and I'm using a tiny brush and I'm just going to delicately <laughs> put in a few clusters of leaves now I really like what I have so I'm going to do my best to just kind of complement the work that I have without going a little too leaf crazy but I am going to show you 
I'm going to start in this top left corner and I'm going to kind of work my way over. I'm just doing little leaf marks, like little lines. And I'll bring this a little closer so you can see it. And it's very subtle. I'll bring it really close so you can see it for a minute. But I'm just doing little leaf-like marks. Just using the tip of my brush. You can make this as thick or as confined as you wish. But I'm just going to do a little bit here and there. I'm going to lean back in my chair. I'm going to reflect on how much I'm adding and where. And then as I get a little lower, I'm just going to do little bits and clusters. A little bit of a leaf here and there. So subtle. Student, thank you so much for joining. All right. Just a little bit of a cluster here and there. And I'm just using really dainty little brush strokes to add in some leaf like detail. I'm going to do yellow on top of this to show you what a little bit of brightness and punch looks like. But this is where you can make the choices on what additional work. Terry, thank you so much for being here. Uh, on what additional work that you want to add to your artwork tonight. You don't have to overdo it. You can keep it simple. You could also sleep on it and say, hey, do I want to add anything else to this? Maybe tomorrow or another day. You don't have to do it all tonight. But be sure to join us for our next class. Be great to see everybody. And if you wanted to paint more often, there's more info on my website if you want to paint more often with us. But we love, love, love working with our friends at AARP New Hampshire. Ashley and the team are incredibly talented and their resourcing is phenomenal. So there's a little bit of green just dusted in. I'm going to get a little crazy here for a Wednesday and I'm going to mix a little bit more yellow. Even a little bit of, you can mix a little bit of white with your yellow and green. And you can add a secondary leaf color just to have a little extra pop. Oh yeah, so pretty. So it's just a little bit of a yellow and I'll bring this nice and close so you can see it. My leaves are always fairly abstract. I'm just doing a little dusting of a yellow leaf on top. I mixed yellow with a little bit of white and a little bit of this subtle green. And my leaves are very subtle. It's really just a touch. If you wanted to do oranges and yellows, like it's a true fall scene, you could do that. But that's just a little bit of a compliment. Bring it down a little lower. You can see it's just a little bit of a delicate detail, which is just enough. And I might just fill in some areas where I might want the tops of the tree areas just to be a little bit more full. Like the top of my canopy a little bit more full. You can make some of those choices. But I'm most at the spot where I'm just going to stop painting, right? We want everybody want to be happy with our work. If you wanted to brighten up down here, this is another consideration. With the yellows and greens that I used at the top, you can add a little extra highlighting down here. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to be a little vicarious here. Um, and then I'm just going to use a little water on my brush. I see that there was a question. I'll look at that in just a minute. I'm using a little water on my brush and I'm just going to smudge and I'm just adding a little extra lightness. Look at this in here. So I took some of that yellowish or a yellowish green and I'm adding some additional highlighting in here. So a little water. Look at this. I love the extra brightness. This was a really, this is one of the things I love the most about this inspiration. A little bit of extra brightness in the grass area. And somebody had a question about the grass. I'll take a look at that in just a minute. I can't believe I did that, Megan, when we did the bottom. I put a little yellow and, and you white. You did? 
You did automatically? I did. Amazing. So yours is nice and bright and see how much you just brighten this up tremendously. You can see, oh, wait, oops. There. Oops. Oh, you did, Corinne. Nice job. You have a beautiful bright down there at the bottom. Nice job. You can make this very yellowy and very bright. Absolutely. It's absolutely up to you. And I'm just doing gentle swipes of color and I'm just kind of smudging it with my finger just to add some extra brightness here and there. It really works with the finger and the water and- Doesn't it? It's so oh, yeah. much fun. Oh, I'm yeah. so glad you tried that. Even like really close back to that line in the distance, you can make it bright back there too. It doesn't matter. You can smudge it right on top of those trees. Nobody's gonna know anything. No, I won't tell anybody. You can <laughs> smudge it right on top of those birch trees. If you need to. She guess what? You can always put a little bit of white back in there. See, finger painting is fun. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So I added a little bit of brightness and I'm at the point where I think that um, it's been a really wonderful class and I hope that everyone's had such a nice time. Um, I'm very excited. Again, there's a lot of new folks on the call. I'm so glad that you're here with us. I will remove my pin and remove my spotlight so we can take a look if anybody wants to show off their progress. Um, but I want to thank everyone again for joining. Oh, Rochelle. Rochelle is an artist. You all know that Rochelle is an artist. Nice job, Rochelle. Oh, There's I saw Dawn's quickly. There's Miss Ellen's. Nice, Dawn. Miss Barbara, beautiful colors. Oh, Jane, Jane, you're an artist too. Look at this. There's so many artists. There's Miss Corinne. Amazing. Let's see who's on my second window. There's Lisa, Lisa Moker. Great to see you. Wonderful to have you join. Claudia's here. Nice to see you. All right. And if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Ginny, how can I help you? Okay. So I, I'm, I used to be, I worked as a graphic artist and commercial artist for a good 20, 25 years. My brain is so wrapped into, oh, it's got to be perfect. But what I did was this. Wait, let me turn my thing off. Yeah, turn your blur off. I'm going to I'm gonna spotlight yours so I can see yours a little bit bigger here. Right. Let's take a look. I didn't complete it, but I did do it. Yes. You I didn't did complete great. it, but I did do it. And I had I love issues it. with that. I had you know issues what? with that. You got to start, you got to start somewhere, right? Absolutely. And I'm proud of you. It's hard Absolutely. breaking out of a bubble, getting into that like different manner of doing things. Yes. And I applaud people like you, you did it. You took a step outside of your comfort zone and you have trees and that you can keep working on that painting. Right. <laughs> I, oh, I will. Yeah. 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 So Amazing. thank you. Thank well, you. Jenny, I hope you join us again. It was so nice to um, meet you. What are you doing next month? <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my head, unless Ashley knows. I don't know if Ashley's still here. Um, I'll have to look it up. Um, let's okay. see here. I think we're doing. I I think we're doing a uh, a Highland cow, a holiday themed Highland cow. I may just come for the camaraderie. That that's part. That then part. you come, or you can paint anything you want. You just join and you come and you paint whatever you want. That part. All right. <laughs> Thank you for such a warm welcome. Thank oh, you. you're so welcome. Thanks for joining. All right. Wonderful. Well, many of you are still working in the zone, which is what you're exactly you're supposed to be doing. Um, Kim, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I'll hang out for a few minutes. If anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to ask, but be sure to get in touch with me. Say, hey, my website and my email are listed below. It'd be so great to stay in touch with everyone. We will be painting again next month. Well, and, and will they list one class from the next? Because I, I mean, I never know where to look or when to look, you know, yeah. like now I signed up because you posted it, but. Yeah, I don't manage uh, when the classes are posted. I work with my partner at AARP New Hampshire for that. Um, right. So uh, I would say, I think she usually posts out like 30 days in advance, but it may be, it may change a little bit. Okay. 
but you always will be able to register. There's Miss Jennifer Grant's beautiful job, Jennifer. I love the abstract background. That looks stunning. Oh, I can't see. Where is she? She is. What page? Child. <laughs> oh, I see it. Oh, yes. Oh, and Debbie, your colors are beautiful. Look how vibrant those colors are, Debbie. Absolutely stunning. All right. And Miss Linda, here comes Linda's beautiful job, Linda. Your trees in the background look beautiful. You positioned your trees nicely in the foreground. And there's Miss Kim's. Kim, look at the beautiful contrast. Kim Scotia has this beautiful contrast with her birch trees and her, her ground. Stunning job. And then there's Miss Laura. Laura Lashina is an absolute artist. She has clouds. She has layers of trees. She has bushes with her birch trees. High five, Laura. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely Laura. stunning. Barbara, beautiful job. I am so, ladies and gents, I'm so impressed. There's Barbara and Laura's. Give yourself a hand, Megan. <laughs> oh, it's not me. I can't take credit. I'm so proud of everyone that joined and you did such a nice job. See, Megan, we all- Megan, yes, I ahead. have two questions. Sure, Barbara. So, this one. <laughs> so when I got my canvas out, I don't know if the humidity got it, but it's not totally flat. So if I do this again, is there a way to flatten it? Or once they bend, they're just bent? Um, you may be able to put um, like um, like some heavy books on it. Um, I haven't really run into that in the past. Um, however, uh, you could try weighing it down to see if it flattens. Um, okay. Another thing that you can do is you can put it in one of these frames that I have behind me and that will keep it nice and flat on the wall. That would be another way to, to display it flat and even. Okay. Yeah. Well, my second question is on my, the sun rays. Yes. It's like they're like got white stripes on the outside and lighter on the inside. And I don't, I tried putting water on them, but it doesn't seem to change it anymore because I think it's dry. Is there any way to fix that? Um, I would use a corner of a wet paper towel and kind of try to scrape it a little bit. You probably can get some of the pigment off, but just use like the corner of a paper towel and just kind of like rub it up against it. That will probably take some of it off. All right. Thank you. Yes. Nice to see you, Barbara. All right. Wonderful. Well, ladies, I want to, and gents, I want to thank you so much for being here. Again, a big thanks to AARP New Hampshire for having us here tonight. And be sure to get in touch, share your artwork with me and sign up for our next class in December. If you're interested in joining, we'd love to see you. You could join for the fun and camaraderie if you don't like the inspiration. You can always take the inspiration and spin it on your own too. So if you wanted to paint another animal or uh, anything else that really comes to mind, we would love for you to join to be a part of the experience again. All right, but thanks again for being here and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. All right. Thank Take you. Take care, everybody.